As more people grow older and pass away, certain aspects of our state's history get lost. However, on tonight's Eye on Kettleland, Summer Rotter Shot shows us a look at a piece of South Dakota sports history from 70 years ago that changed the lives of high schoolers in the small town of Claremont. Marvin Rasmussen and Arlen Warwick are both nearing their late 80s. However, their bond goes all the way back to elementary school. Arlen came to Claremont, I think, like when I was about the fourth or sixth grade, and we became pretty good friends. Then. And we, all the athletics we were involved in all the way through, not only football, and, but basketball and so on, yeah. Athletics overseen by coach Bill Welsh. Marv's son, Mark, wrote a book about the team called Six, a football coach's journey to a national record. But it details the history of the Claremont Honkers and, more importantly, their coach, Bill Welsh, who was the one that kind of coordinated and masterminded the entire streak that they had that created still four national records. Welsh introduced six-man football to the small town of Claremont, a sport that other small towns in South Dakota were already playing. It's, it's basically because there's only six people on each side, um, as opposed to 11, which is your typical uh, football game, they, they shrank the field. They went from, you know, 100, meter, 100 yards by 50 yards to 80 yards by 40 yards. The whole six-man football deal started in 1947, and they had uh, some juniors and seniors that were really good. And we got beat in 53, so there were seven years that we went undefeated. And when Arlen and I graduated from high school, we had won 72 games and lost one. The Claremont Honkers had a 61-game win streak, which set a national record, with only one team breaking the record since. Welsh still holds the record for most wins as a coach, with a 98.4% average. It was kind of a perfect storm. So he had this group of talented kids. He had a town that was immensely motivated to do things well. He, he promoted, he motivated very well. And ultimately, they just, they won. They got so good at what they did, they just won and won and won. Claremont, a town of around 250 people, was drawing crowds of 2,500 people to their games. No matter how much they were winning, Welsh expected a lot from his players. There were times when he would stand up like a linebacker and he'd look, and if he could see that football where you were doing it, he said you had to do it again. So sometimes you'd be there for a long time. More than his coaching skills, Welsh knew how to build a winning team out of the Claremont boys. You could be a... Uh, uh, a contributor, but you never were outstanding. You were all a group, and that was the whole thing that I think why we were successful. It was that there wasn't a leader. Uh, if there was a leader, it was by example, not by yelling and shouting and so on. The only loss Marv experienced came from Hecla in 1953, which people from his generation remember even today. Right now, it's kind of funny. Uh, I read the obituaries, and the guy said, I. I played for heck of the night. They beat Claremont in their obituaries. I thought, whoa, that's really, that, was, that was really something, you know. With two minutes left of this game, Coach Welsh called a timeout to talk to his team before they inevitably lost. He said, I want you to go out there and congratulate each one of those players that, that they played a nice game. We, he said, you know how to win. we got to tell them we know how to lose. With there only being a few members left of the original Claremont Honkers, it is important to remember the legacy these men have while they are still here. It gives me a sense of pride to know that South Dakota had this type of a performance and that there were a group of kids that for that moment in time stood taller than anybody in the world. With Eye on Kelloland, I'm Summer Ottershot. It is football's version of, Ho of Hoosiers. Yeah, I could see a movie out of that. The Claremont Honkers are mentioned 11 times in the national record book for six-man football. Now, we posted the link to buy six, a football coach's journey to a national record. And if you want to learn more about Bill Welsh and the Honkers' history with this story on Kelloland.com.